All right guys, today we're gonna to be talking about the Oshawa region. I'm gonna give you an overview of what is Oshawa made up of from a economic perspective, from a, um, you know, from a geographical location perspective, and let's just dive right into it and, and, uh, and see what, what, what's been going on in Oshawa. So um, recently there was a lot of talk about population growth, um, specifically in the Durham region. Um, and as a result of that, you know, once we see population growth in the Durham region, there's going to be a bigger force of that population coming into Oshawa because of its affordability factor. So in the Durham region, we have essentially, starting from the West End, we have Pickering, Ajax, Whitby, Oshawa, Clarington, and, and we keep going, um, going east. So the reason why we get a lot of people coming to Oshawa is because one, from an affordability perspective, it's, it's affordable and there's various types of homes, which means there's a different price range category. And also as a result, Oshawa is currently the last um, stop on the GO train line, which means that if you're living in, in Oshawa and you're gonna be commuting to downtown, your commute time from the Oshawa GO station to Union Station, which would be the main station in Toronto, is approximately a 50 minute to an hour GO train ride. Um, and, and the GO train run operates on a, essentially on a express line um, in the mornings from 6 a.m. till 9 a.m. and in the evenings from um, 5 p.m. till around 8 p.m. Um, leaving from Union Station. So you can see how you know, this makes sense for people who are looking to get into the housing market because they're going to get cheap prices in Oshawa and they're gonna have the option to travel to, to downtown Union Station um, if they work downtown. So I'm gonna share my screen with you and here we can see that on the Durham Region website, they're calling that at the end of 2016, there was around 673,000 people living in the region. The population is expected to grow to 1.2 million by 2041. And what does that mean? So if we have population growth, there needs to be proper planning. So the city or the Durham Region has called out that there's going to be different types of housing availability. So that means that the city is going to be more pro proactive when it comes to developing or allowing for affordable housing to take action. And we're already starting to see that and I'll show you more in the presentation that, you know, right here in the city of Oshawa, especially in the core, we're seeing a lot of development take place. And I'm talking high rise development, buildings that are available for purchase for the end consumer or brand new buildings going up that are all for lease. Um, as a result of more growth, uh, here you see that they've said there's going to be appealing public spaces and walkable communities. So you're, we're going to see a lot more parks, a lot more green space, um, communities accessible by transit. Um, you know, this is really important because Typically, when we have immigration come into our region, um, you know, it, it takes some time for immigrants to, to get settled and get going. And as a result, they may not have access to, to a vehicle right away. So, you know, having a, a very accessible transit system, which we do in Oshawa, makes it easier for, for immigrants to adapt to the community. Um, and also better protection of our natural systems. So, you know, the, these, these four factors that the city has called um, on the Durham region has called out on the website is really going to help with the the growth management so what I like to do next is take you through um, essentially a presentation that the city of Oshawa puts together every year they do a phenomenal job of putting together a uh, economic um, outlook or a developers outlook presentation which is available to all realtors uh, to attend and, and I attended it in the in the past year where they talk about 2021 and, and what they like to achieve so I like to take you through that presentation and uh, and show you what was presented and kind of give you my take on it so Right here, we see that they're discussing the economical fundamentals of Oshawa. So now we're talking specifically about Oshawa. Um, before I dive deep into this, um, a lot of people associate the, the city of Oshawa, the, yeah, the city of Oshawa with GM. Uh, it's always known as you know the GM manufacturing town, which was true in the 80s and 90s, where you know we had one of the largest plants um, in North America for the production of various cars. But as I'm going to point out here, you see that manufacturing in Oshawa only accounts for 5.7% of the uh, economic base. Um, 
majority of the workforce in Oshawa is driven and led by the healthcare and educational si uh, system or sector. So from a healthcare perspective, we have the Lake Ridge Health Foundation, which essentially has various hospitals across the Durham region. There is a hospital in, in Ajax and Oshawa in Curtis. Um, the, the Lake Ridge Foundation is growing. Um, they're expanding their hospital in Bowmanville. Uh, and there's also talks of a super hospital coming to either North Oshawa or to North Whitby. And essentially this would be the, the next biggest hospital where you, know, you can have uh, trauma centers, cancer centers, uh, and all healthcare um, related um, services. The other major economic sector is the education sector. So there are three post-secondary institutions here in Oshawa. First, we have Ontario Tech University. Um, then we have Durham College and we have Trent University, the Oshawa campus. So these three uh, post-secondary institutions also provide a lot of um, a lot of jobs for people or for the, uh, the Oshawa um, economy. You know, as a result, we're seeing a lot of uh, professors, but also a lot of admin staff. Um, and because, because these universities and these post-secondary institutions are growing, it's also resulting in more uh, construction work also uh, taking place. So year over year, there was uh, approximately a 2.4% increase in, in job change, which was great. Uh, as I mentioned, most of, the, uh, most of the workforce is coming from healthcare, retail, and education. That accounts for almost 40 to 50%. Um, and essentially, I think what we're trying to really drive home here is that Oshawa is no longer only a manufacturing plant, okay? Um, as we move forward, I kind of want to bring your attention to the amount of building permits that are being issued. So it, from January to October 2020, there was approximately $405 million worth of building permits uh, issued, and that was mainly for residential um, projects. Um, this is really cool because you know, we're really seeing the development come into Oshawa, whether it's the high-rise developments or the, um, or the community developments. They're also calling for a strong um, uh, development projects in 2021, which we'll touch base on, okay? So from a GDP perspective, we can see that in 2020, because of COVID and what has happened, the GDP growth has actually dropped to uh, minus 3.7%, but they're, pro they're projecting a, a sharp increase in 2021, which is healthy. Um, and as a result of the real GDP decline, we can see that unemployment in 2020 was high at 7.4%, but we're slowly, slowly starting to see a, a rebound okay, in, in the future years, projected rebound. Now, let's talk about GM. Let's see what GM is currently doing. So, as you know, in 2018, there was announcements made that GM is going to be shutting down the plant and there's going to be uh, no longer any assemblies happening in, in the Oshawa location. But that has changed. So, in recent years or in recent months, uh, I can say there was announcements made by the CEO, CEO of GM that they're taking a more proactive um, approach in terms of aligning their business with the electric vehicle um, realm. So as a result, you know, they're, they're taking a lot of precautions here to build a test track that they're going to solely dedicate to testing uh, electronic vehicles, EV vehicles. As a result of that, um, there's a $1.3 billion investment made um, in Oshawa. It's bound to create 14 to 1,700 jobs. Um, construction has begun, um, and this is all great news. You know, this is going to be bringing back a bit more jobs to, uh, to the manufacturing industry. So, um, over here, we can take a look at the test track that I was talking to you about. Uh, in the bottom right corner, you can see that this is one of the existing lands that are in place right now. And what they've essentially done is they've created a track where they can test a lot of the technologies, the LiDAR technologies, any of the technologies that use uh, that are used in electronic vehicles. Um, they'll be testing it in Oshawa before they put it into any of their, in their vehicles. Um, now let's talk about some of the industrial developments that are happening. Essentially, what's important to note here, if you live in Oshawa and you know Thornton Road South, you know, this is really important because you need to know that Thornton Road South is essentially 
going to be the industrial, the new industrial part in Oshawa. Okay, so there's a lot of state-of-the-art buildings going up. So um, the Panatoni Industrial Development, um, there's two state-of-the-art uh, industrial buildings going up around 59,000 square feet. That's going to bring around 300 to 600 jobs. You know, construction's already taking place. We expect that road to be busier. As a result, you know, people might be less desired to move into, into the Thornton Road area. Area, but hey, there's there's plenty of homes in in different areas of, of Oshawa. Other industrial projects going on. Uh, again, Thornton Road is the basis, but there's also uh, Taunton Road West, which is a main road here in Oshawa. They are going to be developing a 9,000 square meter, approximately 97,000 square feet industrial condominium with 64 industrial units. Who those tenants are, we're not sure yet. Um, port of Oshawa, so, you know, in Oshawa, we do have a port down by the lake, um, and this port is part of the Hamilton Oshawa Port Authority. Uh, they bring in a lot of agricultural grains um, into the area, which helps with local farming communities, okay? Um, in terms of other areas to focus on, so in this map, we can see that Thornton Road is right in the middle of this red border, and they're essentially calling this red border the New Business Development Park. So there's approximately 260 um, uh, hectares or 642 acres of development land for employment purposes. So what that zoning means is that any development happening within that frame has to create employment. Okay, that's a really good sign from a from a job um, development point of view. Um, other development that we can talk about in terms of commercial is the Rio Can Winfield Retail Hub. So this is a retail hub that they're creating north of the university at Simcoe and Conlin, and it's essentially supposed to be a outdoor state-of-the-art um, shopping facility with restaurants, grocery stores nearby to essentially help anyone living in the north part of Oshawa have more accessibility to, um, to shopping centers. You know, we talked about the university, so this is the Trent University Durham. They're expanding, they're building a, um, a student housing facility, they're building new lecture halls, and they're creating new laboratories. So, you know, this is, this is going back to the fact that we said education uh, had a big part in the economic sector. Ontario Tech University, which we talked about, they have a state-of-the-art um, wind tunnel, which, is, which essentially um, houses a lot of work for, for GM and also some other, um, other uh, manufacturing co companies as well. Um, Durham College, the third uh, post-secondary institution we were talking about, they have a EA Sports Arena, um, you know, they have a skilled trade expansion center, uh, and they have a mixed reality lab. So you can see that Durham College is taking a very uh, modern, a very, uh, you know, forward-thinking attitude and bringing a lot of different um, um, faculties into their school which which makes them relevant um, and you know in line with today's world okay um, and next I wanted to talk about some of the projects that are underway so as I mentioned you know there's a lot of building permits issued in 2020 and uh, you know it's evident uh, due to some of the high-rise buildings that we we're seeing in the area so you know we're seeing various of high-rise buildings going up um, you know this is essentially supposed to allow for additional housing affordable housing because some of the prices that we're seeing on these development projects are very attractive we're talking anywhere between five to six hundred dollars a square foot compared to you know a thousand to twelve hundred um, dollars a square foot in in the Toronto area okay so these are just some of the different projects that are underway um, all the orange buildings that you see are supposed to be high-rise buildings coming in to Oshawa um, what I'd like to do next is just show you a map of Oshawa and, sh and show you the different type of neighborhoods um, and also show you you know what we're calling a neighborhoods what we're calling b neighborhoods and what we're calling c neighborhoods and why so i'll bring your attention to my computer and we're looking at a map right now of oshawa um, as you can see here this is the 401 where i have my mouse um, going east to west um, 
so let's let's talk about the A neighborhood. So up north, you can see a lot of the north neighborhoods we've called as A neighborhoods, and that's because these are more recent developments. So these homes are, you know, they're, they're built in, most homes in, this, in these areas are built in the, you know, early 2000s, late 90s, they're, they're still in good shape, you know, the typical two-story house uh, with a two-door garage. So, you know, nice area, nice neighborhood. Um, you know, you don't have a lot of the, the old development in this area. We've, we've called it A-plus neighborhoods because um, from a investment point of view, if you're purchasing a house in the area, you know, you're going to get an, a nicer built house. And if you're looking for uh, rental income in these properties, you're going to attract higher quality tenants. As we come into mid, um, mid the, the mid part of Oshawa, we have the McLaughlin area, the O'Neill area, and the Eastdale area. In my opinion, this is the cream of the crop. These are phenomenal areas where um, we have the type of properties we're looking for from an investments point of view. And when I say investments point of view, I'm talking about the typical bungalow that you can convert into a, uh, into a duplex. And why do I call this the most attractive? It's because it's, in terms of uh, accomplishing this strategy of finding a bungalow and converting it to a duplex, anyone can do it with any um, sort of research, you know, whether it's just watching my videos on my YouTube channel or just um, watching other content that's, you know, just all around, all around YouTube with other uh, investors being published. Um, it's something that's very achievable, okay? So McLaughlin, O'Neill, Eastdale, I would say are areas where you can buy, find bungalows on, on nice large lots. These properties are likely built in the 50s and 60s. So they don't have a garage, an attached garage. And as a result, your basement square footage is not limited. It's not reduced. You have the same amount of square footage that you have on the upper upper floor, which is around 800 square foot, um, 800 to 1000 square foot, and same with the lower unit, okay? And the reason why these are A, B type areas is also because it's not, um, these areas are, are, are far enough away from the downtown core where we've seen a lot of um, activities that, you know, homeowners do not like, such as, you know, evidence of homelessness or evidence of crime. Um, and as we move further south to areas like Vanier, um, Donovan, Farewell, as again, these areas, I would say they're similar to McLaughlin, O'Neill, Eastdale, where we have the, the, the similar type of properties, bungalows that can be converted on nice looking lots. So in terms of selling features, it's, it's very, um, it's very, um, I, what's, what's the word I'm trying to find? It, it's very comparable to the areas that, that uh, I spoke about. Um, it's just, you know, the more south you get, you get closer to what, you know, a term you may have heard, uh, which is South Oshawa. Um, and you'll see that in, in central Oshawa, there's a, an area that we've covered in, or, you know, highlighted in the color red and called it C. This is essentially a corridor, corridor in the downtown area that, you know, you're going to see a lot of older buildings, um, you know, a lot of streets that are, you know, known for crime. So we, you know, I don't recommend my clients to buy in certain areas and certain streets. There's a lot of apartment buildings in the areas. There's a lot of uh, government housing in the area. So we've identified those within this, within the red line. Um, so, you know, I, I've called it a C plus area because there's a couple of streets that I don't like. There's a couple of apartment buildings that I don't like. And these apartment buildings are known for, you know, crime activities that, that happen. Besides that, even within the sea area in Central and Lakeview, there are streets that are still beautiful and streets that, you know, you can buy an investment property. Myself, personally, I had a property um, right in the Lakeview community, which was Oxford and Philip Murray. Um, sold that, you know, did fairly well on it. And I still have a property in the Central neighborhood on, um, on Central Park Boulevard South. So. With that said, although they, they are C-type areas, um, you just need to be very cautious with what streets you're buying on. And that's why working with a local expert, you'll be able to call out um, certain, uh, we'll be able to call out certain streets that we would recommend clients to stay away from. Um, 
besides that, that this kind of gives you a, a nice overview of, of, the, of the map of Oshawa and where I would recommend you to look into purchasing a property or an investment property. Um, in terms of prices, we might have to do another video where we look at you know, the different pricing uh, point on these properties. But um, you know, I guess what I can end off by saying is that um, Oshawa has always been known for GM Town um, and and South Oshawa. So those habits are changing. Where you know we're seeing the the effects of GM shutting down have gone and came, uh, and the and GM doesn't really have that strong of an impact on pricing anymore. And South Oshawa, which was known to be you know the part of uh, you know a, a rough part of Oshawa, is also being gentrified with you know more developments coming to uh, the downtown core, uh, the post-secondary institutions expanding to the downtown area. And as a result, the city has seen this movement and started doing a lot of cleanup in the downtown area and, and, and surrounding areas. With that said, thank you for watching the video. We'll do more videos on the city of Oshawa. We'll talk prices in future videos. Um, and I hope this really gives you a sense of, you know, what the Oshawa economy is made up of. Um, if you'd like to see more videos, more properties that I'm working on, feel free to browse my playlist. You'll see more properties. You'll see various properties that I'm working on where I do a, a, you know, a, a walkthrough of the before and show you the, the construction process and show you the, um, the after product as well. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to um, like, subscribe, dislike, whatever you need to do. Just make, make something happen with the, with, uh, with the YouTube algorithm. Thank you very much and we'll see you soon.